<laughs> um, this film will broadcast in 2011, I think, on Knowledge and Omni. Um, so if you like it, uh, let people know about it. So it's coming up. I have made special edition festival DVDs, so there's a um, day so I don't have a, like, a, a small run. But I've been selling these at festivals because essentially I want people who like the film and who have people who they want to give the film to, Christmas is coming up, um, <laughs> that, you know, it seems to resonate with a lot of people because a lot of people who come to see the film at these festivals are either interracially married themselves, know people who are, have friends who are mixed, and I think the important thing is to be able to say, okay, well, so I've been selling DVDs, is they can take it home and say, okay, I want to watch this. This is the story of what I've gone through. And, and so I think that's important as well, too. We have a bonus, <laughs> this is my plug, um, I, we have a, the bonus soundtracks. So we put the soundtrack on a CD and also included that with the package. So there's a 48-minute cut down, which is the broadcast version, as well as the, uh, the feature that you saw and the DC. Um, but I'm going to open this to questions because I know that, you know, the reason I make film is to create a dialogue and discussion. And I think that's always important to do after, after a film. So I also made that post about film beforehand. That was the, I made little short films on the side. So um, if anyone has any questions burning inside of them, then they would say, hey, look at that. Oh, oh sorry. DVDs are $20. Um, yeah. And I you get them while they're gone, before they're gone, I guess. Um, any other questions? Yes. Stop and talk. Even though it was four years, what was the most difficult part, or what was there a time when you were kind of struggling with it? Or, you know, because there's a lot of people who helped you in terms of the, uh, the sponsorship and the funding, I can imagine there was a lot of bureaucracy you had to get through. Well, yeah, the four years itself was the initial, in uh, 2006, I went to that reunion. And looking around the union, I'm like, you know, I, I was always aware of this. Right? But this reunion, it actually was like, whoa, okay, all the kids are mixed, right? And I'm, you know, I'm thinking, well, yeah, nobody after that generation had married someone else who was Japanese. So, well, it's kind of interesting. I'll go on the stream to find out what was up. And originally, like, we had thought, we'll make a little 14 minute film. I think when we originally pitched the film to the VCRs Council, it was 14 minutes. And um, I kind of sort of went about taking a little more footage and realizing, okay, this is kind of a bigger thing. So we went and sought out more funding, and that funding took about a year and a half, right? Because it's all Arts Council funded, we have some broadcasters, but you know, NFB and some other funding sources came on board, uh, which is very helpful in making a film like this, but we still had a very small budget, right? In comparison to anything else that you, know, you see on television. So it was kind of a struggle, and near the end, I found I was doing everything, right? And part of me kind of being an animator, locked in a room most of my days, I'm used to doing everything. And when it came to the editing, I sort of thought, okay, I could pass this off to an editor and they'll probably do a way better job story editing it and everything else. But at the end of the day, I realized this is family. And I had spent hours and hours of my time talking with them on these, you know, each interview we did is about, you know, an hour to three hours long with, with some of these people. And I realized that at the end of the day, you know, I didn't want someone else interpreting what I had sat through and listened to and, and heartfully understood. And my family was trusting me, at least I hope they were trusting me, um, to represent them well. And I knew that I had to edit the film. And as a director, I always tell people, don't, as a director, you never edit a film. Um, but at the end of the day, it took me a year and a half to edit that because I had to go through the footage and find things I wanted to tell. So it became a very personal story, as you can tell, in the film. So that's my long-winded response. Um, yes? Racism is a big theme, and uh, I think the mixing is one way to alleviate the racism. But it was surprising that when you went to Japan, that, that you're still marginalized for being mixed race. I actually want to ask another question. <coughs> Double party question. The, uh, the, the question, what are you, was very interesting, the most interesting part of the film for me. Uh, one kid had a very interesting reaction and he, he sort of didn't even want to answer the question. Right. But I wonder if you can comment how you actually set it up. How, how did you set up the question to keep it a surprise question from the rest of them and how did all that work? Yeah, I, so the question, well, well that's the first part. It was the, the experience I had in Japan. Um, and the second part is the what are you question. And the whole, ex I think I went to Japan for the first time in 2005 and I went there with this idea that you know, I'm going to find this spiritual awakening, right? I'm going to come back to my roots. I've just, I'm going to discover something amazing here. And the whole time I kind of was going around going, wow, it's pretty Western. 
nobody knows I'm even remotely part Japanese. Those that kind of do, just like, no, no, you're Canadian, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so I kind of had this really weird sort of experience. And it was with a delegation from Kelowna. It was like with the mayor and the city council. So um, the only time I felt this sort of spiritual connection, though, was in this, this the, they had these little parks in Tokyo. And I could hear the wind rustling through the bamboo trees. And I just stopped. And I think I stood there for a good maybe 20 minutes and I, I didn't move. Because I sort of felt there was like something going on here. This, this sound of the rustling of the bamboo and the wind. And I almost felt this kind of very calm. And I think maybe that was that spiritual moment I was looking for. But I know I will go back to Japan. Um, it's hard because I don't speak the language, right? Um, but I've heard that's also difficult for a lot of Nikkei living in Canada. They don't speak the language. They go back to Japan. They look Japanese, but they aren't treated as Japanese or they don't feel the sense of connection, I guess. Um, so I think to each their own, I'm going to go there on different terms and maybe just explore. And that's maybe what I need more of. Um, and to the whole what are you question, you know, that was a question that I know in the 80s growing up, I received almost daily, right? It was, uh, what are you, man? Like, what's your background? What I'm finding now that's really awesome is that kids aren't getting that question anymore. It's not as common. So a lot of the kids, when I asked them, that was the first time they had heard that, right? And I think that's kind of a, a cool thing to think that nowadays we're getting to that point in Canada where people aren't caring so much where you're from or what are you, right? Because you think that that question, and, and there was a conference down in... Um, Harvard that I was invited to talk to, and it was called So What Are You? Like that was the conference, and it was put on by the Hapa Society there. And so that's a pretty, but that's not just a you know a Hapa question. That's not a mixed ethnic question. That's a everybody question. You know, people who are full Caucasian get that, right? Oh, what are you? Where are you from? Right? What's your background? Um, so I think it's just initially being a young country. You know, that's where we're at, right? People are still curious where we're from. Right. I think people are offended when, when they are asked that question, like, why do, why do you care? I'm, I'm a Canadian. But I think for the most part, when people ask the question, it is, like you said, out of curiosity. It's a curiosity they thing. They genuinely want to know yeah. what is your background. Well, it's like conversation icebreaker. Yeah, how's the weather, right? Oh, so are you, right? You look a little different, <laughs> right? Um, and so some people take offense to it, some people love it, right? I've talked to a lot of people who are mixed who love getting asked what they are, right? And teach their own again, right? And that's sort of, at, in Canada, that's what we're going to sort of move towards is this very blended country. Whether it's gonna happen in the next 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, or a thousand years, right? You know, it's gonna take some time to get there, but it will, right? And when it does, the, the face of multiculturalism will shift and change and evolve, right? So, cool, anyone else? Yes. There, you, yes. Are, are you uh, sensitive to what's going on in the Muslim community today, I wonder? Because you, you know, because you can see some parallels. Well, I guess the Muslim community. Yeah. Um, are you speaking more towards the internment? And no, I think I think Muslim thing? today. You know, just because you know your the, the experiences that, that the Japanese Canadians would have years ago might relate in some way. Right. Uh, in this in this time. Right. Well, that happened. You know, during 9/11, right? There was a big scare that that was going to happen to the Muslim community or the, the Middle Eastern community. That there was going to be this big backlash, and they were going to get sent off. Or and the Japanese Canadians after the redress are very uh, like the National Association of Japanese Canadians are very pivotal in making sure this will never, ever, ever happen again. Right? They have set up an endowment fund. They have made sure that they are when they were very pivotal with the. Um, uh, truth and reconciliate with the, the apology to the Aboriginal groups, right? Uh, for the re or for the residential schools, the, the apology. They helped lead that with them because they knew that this had to sort of start moving in the motion where we need to start getting to a point where there is no more discrimination, there is no more racism. And so I know that um, after 9/11, there's been some films on this how the Japanese, you know, kind of would work to make sure this wouldn't happen again, right? And it shouldn't, right? You know, that's that's the just of that, yeah. Um, hopefully that answered that. Any other questions? How long are we doing this for here? <laughs> Come on, man. Okay, um, we got a few, a few more questions. Oh, Bob, how are you doing?